What's interesting about Drew Barrymore's performance is that each of the screams seem to be a little different. And that is a good scream. Hi, I'm Scott Sedita. I'm an acting coach here in Los Angeles, and we're going to be reviewing some horror films, specifically screams in horror films, what works and what doesn't work. So here we go. This particular actor, who's supposed to be looking at trolls eating something, uh, is not looking at anything. It's very clear. They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh, God. His line, and they're going to eat me, he seems to have a question mark on it, so as if he's unsure if that's a truth. As far as the scream here, it's coming from his throat, which means that it's not a strong instinctual scream that has a strong emotional aspect to it. If you're gonna scream, it has to come from something instinctive inside of you with a strong emotional base, and that just seemed to be something, somebody said action, and he went, ah! There, there must be a logical reason for all this. Shut up! the telephone call, I'm outside, all of that play on horror films that Scream was doing, I think it works really well with Drew Barrymore. What's interesting about Drew Barrymore's performance is that each of the screams seem to be a little different. I don't know if that was necessarily planned, but she's a good actress. So she probably put a different intention behind each of those screams for her not to want to see the actor who was on the other end of that phone call. She was in it. She was in it. She wasn't just listening to an actor over there. She was in the whole moment. She was in the character, someone answering a phone. Look, <laughs> you've had your fun now, so I think you better just leave or else. Or else what? And that's why I think the screams work so well for her, the realistic feeling of it. This is a really interesting scream uh, because it's mostly done, it's all in the water, and it's also, you really hardly can see her face. What's interesting about this is there's a symphony of a scream that's happening with the water. But if you look at it, I think some of those screams were added later. Some of those screams were turned down, turned up, more, made more intense. So I think the editor, the director, had a lot to do with the actor's screams there to give us that horror that needed to be in Jaws. Her gurgling sounds are really well played here. You kind of feel like the, the shark bit her and the blood is rushing all over the place. And I think that's what Spielberg wanted. He wanted that feeling of kind of like crazy real screams. Okay. Candy Clark's a good actress. She was nominated for an Academy Award for American Graffiti. Not her best work here. Brent? The Blob is a good old fashioned horror film uh, and it's a remake of the original Blob. So I'm not sure in some ways if they wanted it uh, to feel kind of campy, but Candy Clark's performance here is a little campy. That uh, B-movie screaming. And her screams seem to be coming from some odd place. I don't believe that that is happening in the moment to her. I believe she's just screaming because the director said, now scream, action. <laughs> but it is the feel of the movie, of the remake of the blog. It is the feel of it. So I'll give Candy Clark a little pass for that particular role.
Jennifer Love Hewitt is a really terrific actress. I think her screams are good as well. They seem to be coming from somewhere. They seem to be coming from the gut, from the core, from the diaphragm, and coming all the way up. There is a scream here, though, that is kind of wacky. When her boyfriend reaches down his hand to hers and she lets out this weird scream. Come on, Julie. Ray. But I think all the other screams work really well. Especially the last scream. When the guy gets up, that last scream... It was timed really well, number one. But that last scream, that was that just came right up, to, and that was strong. Jennifer Love Hewitt uh, was a, actually a child actress, and one of the things that uh, she did as well was sing. She's trained as a good singer. So therefore, as a good singer, you're trained to use your diaphragm. So the voice actually comes from some place, the core, the diaphragm. So when she lets the scream out, it seems natural and honest. The, this, the old put the hand to the face scream. <laughs> so that is uh, because of the old time movies. Ladies were not supposed to scream. Yes, that's what frightens me. It wasn't ladylike to rip out a scream. They kind of had to make it more gentle. So it, they, it had to have a softer quality to it. And I think May Clark put that softer quality to it. But for the time, that was a good scream. Also, there's a close-up aspect, and a lot of these people came from silent movies, remember? I mean, this was the 30s movie, so 10 years prior to this, there were basically silent movies. Elizabeth. I mean, it, that was the style of the piece. The whole idea that a, a lady-like woman like Mae Clark, who's on her wedding day, all in white, turning around and seeing the greatest monster on film, Frankenstein right there. The whole idea of the damsel in distress is mocked uh, in this time. Are you sure? But during that style, she was great. I love you so. <gasps> what, what is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! Okay, so this is a really difficult scene to watch. And the reason it's a really difficult scene to watch is because the acting that Nicolas Cage is doing. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's, he's getting hit by bees. I mean, that's like a nightmare. As the bees are being, um, you know, pumped into his face and he's being stung, it's like, oh my God, what's happening to me? It's very reminiscent of the old movies. Uh, back in the 30s of the horror films, you know? And maybe that's what he was going for. I'm not sure. Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! The whole idea of bees is so horrific that we all could just feel and empathize and, and feel the horror of it. Oh, no, not the bees! He probably would have been better to say nothing or just to have this inner scream, what's going on? Or just feel them coming so it's just like, ah, you know, that kind of thing. But instead he's like talking through it. If they're stinging me on the nose. My eyes! My eyes! Ah! Interesting choice. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's an interesting choice. It's one that I don't necessarily get. But, you know, he's a terrific actor. I like Nicolas Cage, but that scene, oh my God. Oh. This is murder! Murder! You'll all be guilty! And that is a good scream. This is almost a little like what I talked about with Spielberg and Jaws, is that the director definitely had a hand in the editing as far as the screams go.
We had never seen anything like that when this film came out. Alfred Hitchcock wanted to make something that was seemed very real. And you know, he did like a million takes um, of that uh, shower scene. She had to scream a million times. Actors, if they scream too much, can hurt their vocal cords and get nodes on their vocal cords. These actors who have to do take after take after take after take have to use their training. Janet Lee in Psycho was trained as an actress on the lots of Warner Brothers. Janet Lee was probably classically trained, so she knew how to be able to do that. So where are you taking us anyway? Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> You know, after the first scream, they had to do another one, so they had to top the screams of uh, Drew Barrymore and all the people in that film. Scream 2 is supposed to be this self-aware slasher film. You know, in the old bad B-movie horror films that we saw, uh, the screams are coming from, ah, from here. That's not a real scream. Both these actors pull off the scream very naturally. As campy as their screams can be, the screams seem to be authentic to me. And it's constant. Do you imagine having to shoot this particular scene with uh, the smashing of the window, the scream? They have to over and over and over again. So they better be using the scream from down here and not the scream from up here. Both these actresses do a great job. Please, he did. I'm looking at a classic horror scene. Is it over the top? Is she over the top? But yeah, she is. <laughs> Shelley Duvall's performance, you know, is kind of controversial. Some people think it's okay, and some people think it's great. There's a lot of stuff going on, the face, the bug eyes, the whole, it was really a little over the top. And I think a lot of this was Shelley Duvall didn't know what was going down. I think the director wanted everyone to feel the horror of what was happening. So when she saw the ax, she was definitely kind of being in the moment. Jack Nicholson was coming through that door. <laughs> But I think it worked with the film. You know, you, you watch it too closely and you try to analyze the, the screams on it and you might be uh, picking up stuff that might not be uh, as truthful or you might be picking stuff up that would, there must have been a better take. But at the same time, there's it's just one take going on there as the blades are coming through, the, the ax are coming through the door. She goes, ah! ah! But uh, it's a classic scene. It's a classic horror movie. Here's Johnny. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween. Classic. And everybody knows that Jamie Lee Curtis's mother is Janet Lee from Psycho. So screams run in their family. Obviously, it became a huge franchise, a billion dollar franchise. But I think when it first was made, it was made on a, a short time frame, and it was Jamie Lee Curtis's first movie performance. <laughs> this particular scream and what's going on here seems to be a little guerrilla filmmaking. It's improvisational. When she runs out of the house and she goes, oh my God, oh my God. Oh God, help me! I don't necessarily feel like it's coming from anywhere. I think that they just shot the first couple of takes. I don't think there was a lot of takes going on here. Please! Please! Please help me! Oh! Oh! This kind of improvisational, let's just go, go, take and go, keep going, go, you know. So I don't know. Oh my God, what's happening here? I think it was also how the film was directed. This was a whole new generation of horror films. So there was a kind of filming process 
the f kind of look of a film in the 70s, in the late 70s. They wanted it real, they wanted it conversational, they didn't want it actory. And I think that's what Jamie Lee Curtis did in this film. But to, I will say that if you've seen the newest Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis, she is great. Her screams are great. They're centered. <laughs> I'm sure she looks back at that first film and goes, oh, wow, that's how I scream. Blake? It seems like the actress has a hard time reaching down and finding the truth to the scream, especially in a moment when you say action and all of a sudden she has to let out a scream. I don't think she's necessarily prepared or uh, trained to be able to be instinctive in that way. <laughs> if it's true that Paris Hilton asked the crew to scream with her because she was scream shy, that's because screaming is being vulnerable. In order to scream, you have to really be vulnerable. I don't think she wanted to be vulnerable. For me, Paris Hilton is a celebrity. She knows how to be Paris Hilton. Going into a character is a whole nother story. That's being an actor. So um, the idea that she might wanted the crew to scream with her is really a way because she felt uncomfortable expressing this horror that she's supposed to be feeling, which is uh, understandable. Vera Farmiga, first of all, is a brilliant actress. And the screams that she does in The Conjuring are almost operatic. Those screams are actually something that she's rehearsed and practiced, as if a singer had to sing big, belty songs out loud. They have to know how to be trained. <laughs> Especially when she wakes up and she has to do that incredible scream. That takes a lot of energy. She does this hysterical scream, which is so difficult to do. Not only is it so difficult because it's long and extended, but it's because she had to do it over and over and over again. Matter of fact, months after filming wrapped, she had swollen lymph nodes. Now, even though she's classically trained, and even though I'm sure she understood that her voice is important to her, that and she tried to do the best diaphragm breath scream, it's really hard to do take after take and not get an injury like that. You do too much of something, it doesn't really matter. Those screams are some of the best film screams you will ever see. I mean, actors should watch Vera Farmiga in, in The Conjuring 2 to see how to do that type of scream. Waking up from a horrible nightmare scream. Hi. Hi.